We've got 30 workers and they all appear in their default color of black. What I want to do is actually change their colors to indicate which of the workers are busy, which of them are actually idle. If I go to my reference library and I go to process modeling, process modeling library blocks, one area where I can actually see it is the resource pool. If I scroll down to the bottom, I can actually see programmatically those are all the actions and all the functions. So there are functions in terms of um, telling me the number of units that are idle, the number of units that are actually busy, and the resource unit is addressed by the kind of the local variable called unit. So if I want to know what that unit um, actually is doing, I can programmatically change its color or address a number of its of its attributes. So let's see if we can address that. So let's go to the workers. So I see under the actions I can perform code on C's as well as on release. And I know now that whichever unit is being seized or released, I can address by the word, uh, by the phrase unit. Control space, there is the unit, it is of type worker. Dot, what methods do I have available? Shape body. These are all the get methods. And I see that I can actually get the color as well. So as soon as it's being seized, let's set the color to red. And as soon as the unit, a unit is being released, I will set its color to green. And that should be sufficient. Let's run the model and see. Initially, they should still appear black because at that point in time, none of them have actually been either seized or released. We can speed up the model to just see if that portion of our code actually works. Here comes the first assemblies. It does not seem to change its color right now. There is a shape body. I'm not sure whether the color of the shape body is actually. Ah, there's a get full color. So it seems that the resource unit is given in this particular case because we've assigned um, that two-dimensional figure to it. It seems that it is assigned um, some body shape as, as a parameter. And there is the set full color. So instead of using set color, we will use set full color and use the same. Color as before. And let's see if that works. That looks better. The bodies change to red as they are seized and there we can actually see they turn green again as soon as they are released. It does seem with this backlog of assemblies that they're going to be busy for quite a while. All right. To end off this model, the last thing we're going to do is add some statistics or some graphs that we can actually look or study some of the phenomena or utilization in our model. 
there is an entire um, tab in the palette dedicated to um, to analyses. We can have a variety of bar charts, pie charts, plot. I want to look at two things. The first one is going to be a time plot. I'm going to leave the name standard. What I would like to do in this time plot is actually check the utilization in terms of how many assembly units are currently active and also how many or what the overall utilization over time of my resource pool is. I'm going to add two data items. Because it has a method called delay size and that will return the number of entities in the embedded delay object. Each one of those assemblies are active, so we know that they are really busy being productively worked on. So that will give me an integer value. I know that... Uh, where's the scale? I can actually fix the scale. I want a fixed scale from zero. I want to add a second data item, so let's make... They change that color to green. Those are the units that are busy. And then I also want to track the actual utilize the average utilization over time of all of my assembly machines. There is a method in the assembly machines called utilization, which will give me a value between zero and one. So I'm now going to mix two scales, one being between zero and eight and the utilization will be, will be between 0 and 1. So what I'm just going to do is multiply it with its capacity and convert the utilization in percentage to, to its capacity. And this I see is um, an integer. So just to make sure it works correctly, I'm going to cast that integer to double. We can just resize that slightly, just so that it fits onto our screen. Let's see what it actually produces if we speed it up a little bit. Something seems to be odd with our first data set. Let's just fix that quickly. Oh, I haven't changed it at all. The first data set, let's call that number of busy units. We haven't specified what it should actually be. That should be assembler dot delay size and the second one is average utilization that looks better so you immediately can see the number of active units very quickly updates and the average utilization changes slightly or less abruptly over time. And as it gets to the time horizon, it actually rolls over. All right, so I've got one bit of statistic that one can actually look at and compare different scenarios with. The other one that I want to add, and with that we're going to finish, is a time stack chart I'm going to add next to it a 
and here all I'm going to do is just add the number uh, or check the number of busy workers and the number of idle of idle workers. So the value will be my workers not busy and oops the busy workers I want to color red and add another item. Let's call that. My data set this is wrong. Let's speed it up again. So we can see that all the units are currently idle. And as soon as the first assemblies arrive for packaging, the number of workers actually changing to busy increases. And it should remain a playoff between 0 and 30, which is the number of workers that we actually have available. You will also see that on my model itself, it actually shows me the number the total number of units and also the number active exactly which units are currently active and at the bottom it actually tells me the average utilization as well right so we we have our first little any logic model um, and the purpose was mainly to show you how to make use of the graphs how to connect the blocks um, add a little bit of animation adapt the agent type and get something running. This does not tell us how can we make more significant decisions or how can we actually evaluate scenarios, um, but it should get you out of the blocks in terms of building your simulation models.